So after how the last anti-Stasi video was quite action-packed, I figured something calmer would be a good idea, and so this is my quick start guide for the anti-Stasi mission file. I'll show you how to get the same mods I use in my series on this mission, and the easiest ways i found to get over some of the mission's initial hurdles for the beginning of a new playthrough. I'll cover the following topics. Subscribing to the mission file and bots, starting a new game and picking a starting location, being undercover, getting gear, doing your first missions, public support, easy outpost catches, and managing aggression. I'll be sure to timestamp these in post, so feel free to skip around the video to find whatever you want easier. If you've played the mission file a few times and just want some tips on starting out easier, skip to the getting gear section, which is at the timestamp you can see now. Please keep in mind, however, that this is not a complete guide, it is supposed to guide you through getting a better start in a new playthrough. So thanks to the Steam Workshop, subscribing to Mission Files and Mods is very easy to do. To find the version of Andy Stasi I play, which is 1.3.5, follow the link to the Steam community page I put in the description of all my Andy Stasi videos, and in the pinned comment on this one. Log into Steam and simply click subscribe. Follow the link I've left in the pinned comment also to the RHS Mods collection, and subscribe to the AFRF, GREF, and USAF mods. Keep in mind that these are large packs and will take a while to download, depending on your connection. Last on the list, and this one is optional, is Advanced Movement. This allows you to do a lot of the climbing that you'll see me doing in my anti-stasi series, and once you start using advanced movement, you'll find it hard to go back to vanilla movement, so don't worry about this mod if you're not too picky on that kind of thing. Again, link in the pinned comment, but to get this working, you have to bind it to a custom control. I'll cover that in a second. To get the mods loaded into the game, launch Armor 3 to bring up the launcher, and click on Mods. Find the mods you just subscribed to in this list, and tick the boxes to tell the game to load them up when it launches. The mission file won't appear here. That doesn't mean you did anything wrong. Mission files aren't mods, so this is normal. If you have other mods, make sure they're compatible with Antistasi before you start. As a general guide, anything which affects the AI or the medical system will not be compatible. Now, to get advanced movement working, Load into the game and go into your key bindings. Bind one of the custom actions to a key or combination of keys, and then in the mod options, set advanced movement to use the custom action number you just bound to your keys. To start up anti-stasi, go into the main menu of armor and hover over single player, then go to scenarios. Anti-stasi will be in this list under the altars map. Alternately, if you're playing multiplayer, Join the server through the multiplayer browser as you would any other server. When you load into the mission, you're presented with three choices. The first option is the difficulty you start on. This affects resources you start with, not the actual AI difficulty. This is controlled by what you set your difficulty as before you launch the mission file. It's entirely up to you which you start with, but as time goes on, this decision matters less and less. As for actual AI difficulty in this mission file, AI skill differs between different types of units and how far into the game you have progressed, so attacking an outpost will be harder than taking on a military police patrol in a town, and doing either of those will be harder 30 hours into the playthrough. The second option is the type of game you want to play, which defines the factions that appear and who is hostile to each. Antistasi was designed as an all vs all mission, so generally you'll pick either the Resistance vs Government, or Resistance vs Government vs Invasion modes. The Invasion adds a timed mechanic to the game by causing an invading force to fight the Government force for control of altars. If the Resistance attempts to fight the Invasion, they will occasionally launch counterattacks against civilian targets. The mission file fails if enough civilians die, so if it's your first time playing, or you want to take things at your own pace, you should start with the Resistance vs Government mode first. The last option is where you start the game. The area you're put into initially isn't the worst option, though you want to look for three main things here. 
The first is that your base location isn't on a road between any two other map elements. Picking something at the end of a dead end road, and if there's a compound there, which will be walled for concealment, even better. The second is map elevation between you and any other map elements. As you can see on the map, elevation markers are written faintly everywhere. Make sure there is some kind of hill between you and any enemy positions. The third is the map elements you're close to. You want to be near to towns, so you can take missions there, but not too close to outposts, as the enemy will patrol up to a kilometre around them. Picking an area with a radio tower, a factory, and a normal outpost near a few towns will give you a nice balanced start. A major mechanic of anti-stasi is the ability to go undercover, essentially making you seem like a civilian to enemy forces. There are two ways to be undercover. On foot, you can unequip any kind of military gear other than bags, meaning you need to be in civilian clothing with no vest, helmet, weapons, or NVGs. You can still keep military gear concealed in your bag, meaning you can carry armor and weapons with you. Once you meet the conditions to go undercover on foot, press Y to open the menu and click Undercover On. This only works if there are no enemies nearby. The other way to be undercover is to be in a civilian vehicle. Basically any vehicle you see civilians driving is okay, and if you use your flag to buy a vehicle, you can select civilian vehicles, and all of these will work for this too. The off-road from this menu is a great choice, as not only does it have a cargo bay, but it has six seats. You will automatically go undercover if you aren't already when getting in a civilian vehicle, assuming that there are no enemies nearby. Civilian vehicles can keep you undercover even if you're wearing military gear, but only as long as you're inside. There are several ways to lose your undercover status which can lock you out of being undercover potentially. Any method which involves you voluntarily getting out of the undercover state, such as equipping a weapon or getting into a military vehicle, will not lock you out of the undercover mode. If you're detected by a sniffer dog, or perform a suspicious action like placing explosives while on foot, you will lose your undercover stead for 30 minutes or until you next die. If you drive too far from a road, run a soldier over, or attempt to drive past a checkpoint or into an outpost, and fail a roll to check to see if you're still able to be undercover, the vehicle you're in will be reported and you cannot use it to go undercover. You will need to get a new one, or put that one in your garage at base using the Y menu, and then retrieve it through the flagpole in the base management menu. The role I mentioned with being undercover in military areas depends on your war level and aggression. The higher these numbers are, the lower your chance of being able to basically walk into an active military base. The gear you start with will be very basic, and so you'll desperately want to start by getting some more reliable equipment. The only way to do this is to get it from the enemy, however there are a few easy ways to do so. The fastest way to get some basic gear is to attack the military police patrols in a town. They generally only patrol in pairs, they are relatively unskilled, and you can get away very easily with the abundance of civilian vehicles around to keep you undercover. This won't get you any helmets or high armor level vests, however you will be able to get some weapons and ammo, as well as a few grenades to get you started. Some of these weapons may be part of the Apex DLC as I've found, so keep this in mind if, like me, you don't own it and can't use the nice modern AKs that they carry. There are missions which will lead you to getting a lot of gear, such as convoys, which I strongly recommend you don't touch at all due to how they're created, and ammo vehicles which you can quite easily capture without having to fire a single bullet. I'll cover this mission in the next section, but there's a third way to easily get gear, which may initially appear to be a bit exploity. For this method, make sure you're wearing civilian gear, which will let you go undercover on foot, and drive an off-road or other civilian vehicle with a cargo bay, like a Zamac, up to an outpost, which keeps the arsenal box close to the road. You can load the arsenal box into your vehicle without being detected, then simply drive away with a full box of equipment. Every time you go back to base with a full vehicle of equipment, 
you can park next to your Arsenal box and scroll over it to select the transfer contents to Emma box option. This also works for stolen Arsenal boxes if you press this twice. Once you have enough of a certain item and this number changes per item, you will gain an unlimited supply of it. This is one of the main reasons you want to do missions for several hours before trying to capture enemy outposts. If you go to Petros in your base, you are able to request different types of missions which you can undertake. Keep in mind that if you request a type of mission, you'll be unable to request that same mission type for some time after you complete or fail the assigned mission. Missions are something you will want to do a lot at the start of the game. However, only a few of them will help you this early on. In fact, some of the others could hurt your playthrough, depending on if you fail them or just die trying to complete them. For example, convoy missions may seem like an easy way to get some vehicles and equipment early on, with how enemy AI will be weaker, but in the current version of the mission file, they seem to depart from their destination immediately, and when they arrive, the enemy will either gain aggression against you, will gain public support of a town, or will gain local access to armoured vehicles. None of these are desirable, and when the convoy can often arrive before you have time to reach it, it's best to only do the convoy missions which naturally spawn instead of requesting them. The two categories of missions you will want to do are logistics and assassination. Logistics missions come in a few types, one of which will only spawn if your base is close to either Kavala or Pyrgos. The location dependent type is a bank robbery, which requires you to keep a boxcar close to a building in one of the two major towns, and after a timer you will gain money by delivering the boxcar back to base. I would recommend not doing this one to start with, as you will have to fight your way out of a major town. Both of these have several outposts in the surrounding area, and it will drastically reduce your standing with the public in that area. I'll cover more on public support in the next section. Another type of logistics mission is the complete opposite of the bank mission. You need to take a supply box into a town using a vehicle with a cargo bear like an off-road or Zamac, and defend it till the timer runs out. This will give the supplies to the locals, and will increase your support in that town drastically. If you've done other missions in the area, this will usually convert that town to your side on the next time resources take over. The third type of logistics mission is a refugee or PRW evac. These can be handy to give a slight increase to your HR, however this is far more trouble than it's worth, especially if it's a PRW evac as these spawn in enemy outposts. It's safe to ignore these missions when they appear, as HR is unimportant in the very early stages of the game, and when you actually start needing it, you should have plenty of it from the town supporting you as you complete other kinds of missions. The fourth type is the type I mentioned regarding finding gear. The steal or destroy missions have you travel to an enemy outpost to either steal or destroy ammo transports. These contain a lot of gear most of the time, so it's always worth stealing them. They have light armor, meaning that the enemy AI will prioritize gunfire over explosives, and most of the 5.56 rifles they carry will only be able to penetrate the windows. Since you'll be driving away from the enemy, this makes things very easy for you. Simply drive up to the vehicle while undercover, and get into the transport as soon as you get out of your civilian vehicle. Drive back to base, and offload into the arsenal box. The other category of mission you can take on easily is the assassination mission type. This will spawn a traitor in a building in a town nearby, protected by higher ranking enemy soldiers than you will have likely fought so far. Without suitable gear, you may find a direct engagement difficult, though you can cheese these missions by going into undercover mode, walking right into the building the traitor is in, or by throwing a grenade or firing a missile into the building from a distance before driving away. Keep in mind, if you alert the traitor without killing them, they will attempt to flee to the nearest outpost in the vehicle outside the building they spawn in, and this vehicle is a great way to tell which building the traitor is actually in, as it's parked right outside. There are some cases where this does not apply, such as dead-end roads, as the vehicle will just be placed in the most appropriate location to the building they're in. If the traitor flees and reaches the outpost, they will trigger an attack on your headquarters, so be certain you can make the kill before you start attacking the mission. The reason I recommend you take on such a high-risk mission early on 
is that these missions can spawn without them being requested, and so it's very important you get used to how they work and how to complete them effectively early on. This is because the traitor doesn't have to flee to reach the outpost for it to trigger an attack on your base. If the mission fails, this also happens. Public support is the whole reason you will want to do missions for maybe the first 20 or so hours of your playthrough. While money and HR are basically worthless early on in the game, as you don't really need them, they are very important in the late game where you need these resources to build up your garrisons and task forces to take and defend enemy positions. There are two main ways to gain public support in towns. The first is completing missions in and around towns. Any missions other than those which harm the public, such as bank robberies, will increase your support. The second is by killing enemy soldiers in and around the town. You gain a small amount of support for each kill, and you may find that in extended engagements you gain support of one or more towns before you even capture the outpost you're attacking. Keep in mind though you can also lose public support through missions like the bank robbery, but also through harming civilians. Everyone you kill will lower your support in and around that town. After your support becomes higher than every other faction in a town, they will become supportive of you, and will add HR and money to every resource tick from that point going forwards. After you've gained support from several towns, leading to you gaining a steady amount of money and HR on every resource tick, you'll want to start looking at capturing enemy outposts. This is how you win Antistasi. You need to take control over as much of the island as possible. Outpost attacks can actually be very difficult if you go in unprepared or without a clear advantage, and to make it worse, attacking an enemy position will trigger something called a QRF, which is a quick response force. This is a team of enemies sent in vehicles, which will change depending on the enemy's resources and the current war level. Because of these QRFs, you will want to hit the outpost very fast and very hard. An easy way of doing this is using a mortar. Before you can hit an outpost with a mortar, you will need to load the garrison into the map, which you do by going near it. Storing but not loading garrison units and data is how the mission file continues to run smoothly even though there are hundreds of AI technically deployed at once. The best way to do this is to use your flagged base to recruit an AI teammate, also to buy a mortar, which is the podnos in the military vehicles menu on your flag. Disassemble the mortar and put the gun bags into a civilian vehicle, put some combat gear into the vehicle with it, and equip civilian gear to go undercover before driving yourself and your teammate to the outpost you want to attack. Use AI commands to leave them in a building close to the outpost, but make sure they are concealed, as once you come out of undercover mode to use the mortar, they will be shot at by enemies who spot them. Commanding them to hold fire, and putting them in a specific position, is the easiest way to keep them in place. Once this is done, drive to a safe distance in a concealed area, and drop one of the mortar gun bags on the floor. With the other equipped, Scroll on the first gun bag and assemble the mortar. Get into the gunner seat, yes it's technically a vehicle, and scroll down to the artillery computer. Pick a range option that will allow you to hit your target using the green circles as reference, and make sure you have explosives loaded, not smoke shells or flares. Click on the map in the outpost and click fire. Rinse and repeat till you're satisfied you've hit most areas of the outpost, and then disassemble the mortar. Put it back into the vehicle, and drive to the outpost. With some outposts, the mortars will be enough to capture it, as you will kill everyone in the area. However, some outposts, especially those with several buildings, need you to clear the area a little. Equip your combat gear and sweep the area with your teammate to pick off the stragglers before claiming the flag. If you press Y and then select fast travel, you can travel out of the area back to base immediately, which will despawn the QRF triggered by your attack, as you will be too far away for Antistasi to load it in. As you progress through the mission, you will notice that you accumulate an aggression value for each faction. This value will affect how hard and how often the enemy will hit you. 
it is important to try and keep this as low as possible early on, otherwise you will be overwhelmed due to how you are unable to limit the enemy's resources, so you have the means to capture and defend resource dumps and factories. A higher aggression will see more skilled units in patrols and garrisons, more vehicles of more deadly variants being deployed on QRFs, and much heavier counterattacks on enemy positions you've captured. There are a few ways you can lower aggression. The least limiting on your own progression is to revive enemy soldiers who you have wounded to get them to surrender to you before releasing them. This can also be done with enemies who have surrendered on their own from losing morale. This happens when several enemies die in succession, or when you suppress enemies with higher caliber weapons for an extended time. Another way is to complete supply missions in towns, and finally, if you're struggling to keep hold of positions, it's worth simply abandoning them, as this will limit the growth of aggression you get from capturing them back. And that will do it for my quick start guide. As mentioned, this is not a complete guide to anti-stasi, just guidance on how to get a better start to your playthrough of the mission file, without making things too much harder for yourself later on. Once you start advancing into the mission, you will want to start making use of AI units to supplement your task forces. I also have a guide on managing AI in Antistasi on this channel. I'll link this underneath where I link the mods in the pinned comment. Hopefully this helped those of you watching. Feel free to leave questions in the comments if you have any still.